It's not about where you work, it's who you're working for. And I think to me that it's kind of helped in my career of finding those creative leaders that I admire and finding people that, that you can respect in the industry. Welcome to Real Creative Leadership, a place where creative leaders can find insights and practical guidance on the day-to-day job of being a creative leader. We focus on real issues, topics, and insights of creativity in the business world. Join me as we explore the best strategies for developing your team, getting others to embrace your vision, and generating amazing experiences. This webinar series is produced by The Stoke Group. I'm your host, Adam Morgan, Adobe Executive Creative Director and author of Sorry Spot Emotions Drive Business. And this is Real Creative Leadership. Thank you so much for joining us. This is episode three on season two, and we are going to be talking about creative career paths. And we have our esteemed guest, Joe Esposito, who will be joining us here. And I'm gonna pass it over to him for just a, a hot second to introduce himself, give a little background of who he is, where he comes from, and then we'll dig deep into this topic. So Joe, why don't you take it away and give us some, give us some context. Thanks, Adam. Thank you so much for inviting me on the show. It's, it's such a pleasure. So I'm a creative, I'm based out of New York City. Um, I've been here for the past about 20 years uh, from small boutique, boutique agencies to, you know, bigger uh, creative powerhouses. Um, I also took some time off. I, I did freelance, um, which was an amazing experience. Um, I worked on everything, selling fast food to Mercedes Benz to uh, hospitality and, and, and technology. So about three years ago, I had a friend um, that went, uh, jumped to the brand side and he had, was talking about it. And uh, I was very interested at the time and it was for IBM. It was to launch their new content practice called IBM Originals. And what got me intrigued was i had always spent my career like trying to sell up these big ideas through these agencies and through these holding companies and all these levels. And I thought, you know what? what if I'm on the inside and I can sell something up? What, you know, if I have that, you know, upper hand, what also attracted me to IBM, you would think IBM, well, that's a huge global company that this content practice that they were standing up was like a scrappy startup. And there was only about 15 people at the time. So um, I came on board about three years ago and it's been an amazing experience. One of our mantras is to make less matter more. And I just think, Right now in our industries, you know, we're competing for everyone's attention. So we really have what we're, you know, what we need to communicate to people. We need it to be something that they want to engage with. And I just want to dig in a little bit on this because I went through a similar journey as you. Uh, you know, I did 19 years of ad agency life and then finally flipped over to a brand side and I'm here at Adobe. But I, I just see so much of this happening. And a long time ago, maybe like in the mid nineties, you know, late nineties, that was just like, you were either in one camp or the other, it was no jumping around. But today, I don't know if you see it as much as I do, but there are so many people who are moving from brand to agency and back and forth fluidly. Well, anyhow, let's dig in a little bit deeper. The topic we have for today is we're going to talk about creative career paths. If you listen to episode two, just before this, you know, we went through all the different ways that you can take a creative career. And I think there are a lot of myths that we need to bust and we're ready to go through and talk about because like I said just a minute ago, there, there were these, uh, these stories that we were told of like, oh, you can only do X, Y, or Z if you want a really good creative career. You can't, you can't go in-house or you have to go up the, the standard path. And you know, we may be referencing some of those, those graphs of, you know, and we'll bring them up if we do on at least the old career paths and then the more modern career paths. But really what I want to start at, let's, let's just talk a little bit about these different types of, of paths. And maybe what I want to bring to the forefront here, Joe, is it's just some of your lived experience. What type of career paths did you see or have you seen at agency versus at brands? And, and what are some of the differences there? So when I started out, I was a writer with a design background. And back then I tried to, my, <clears throat> tried to sell myself as both. Mm. You know, I'm this uh, creative ninja, I can do both. Um, but back then I was told, pick a lane. And so I soon paired up with an art director. Uh, and then it was that traditional path, you know, from a junior to a senior, to an ACD, and onto a CD. Very traditional, very linear, left to right. Mm-hmm. Um, when I went on the brand side, you know, a lot of my agency friends said this would be the kiss of death. I mean, your career is over. But at the end of the day, it's, we're, 
we're problem solvers, we're idea generators, we're strategic thinkers. And those skills can really open a door across, you know, to become a strategist or a producer or a director or an editor, or, you know, at IBM, we're, we're really into design thinking and to coaching mm-hmm. other people how to think creatively, um, whether they're in, you know, in a marketing aspect or, or a financial aspect. I think those skills that we learn as creatives can really open that door across the whole organization. Oh, I love where this is going. This is not even something we'd planned to talk about, but uh, yes, I mean, there's a, there was a recent great study by McKinsey on what a creative leader does for an organization. And it really is, you know, some of the main points are that they're constantly thinking of new things. They're always learning to adjust and to zig and zag and whatever it may be. And so I would say that's awesome for careers, whether you're going to jump from one to the next to the next. If you're really, really great at multiple things, awesome. Picking a path or at least finding a core talent or a core skill set is totally, totally fine. Um, You know, if you're going to learn, you know, you don't want to dabble in so many things right from the start that you're just a master of nothing, right? So you want to at least find your core. But I think beyond that, you just keep building on it. As a creative mind, you know, you're always looking for new things and always trying new things. So again, yes, don't get locked into just thinking that you have to take a linear path. And once you're an X, you're always an X. It's fluid. And we need to stay fluid and understand that what you need to first do is look for what do you care about? What's in it? You know, what, what are you looking for in personal goals? And then try and map that perfect, that perfect journey to it, to where you're trying to get to. What's so important is, is finding your own passion and that creativity and, and where it can take you. And, and like you were saying, I, I think the possibilities are, are quite endless. I've seen so many of my coworkers go on and do amazing things. Um, whether it was the person at the front desk who was answering the phone, who said, can I write a radio script? And, mm-hmm you know, and then broke into the role or a strategist that, you know, took a pay cut to be a producer. uh, And then two years later is doing a Super Bowl spot. Uh, I think it's just really is going with your gut and just like having the courage to, to take that next step. Just be true to yourself. Excellent. Although I would say like, here's, here's the cautionary note. We, We certainly want to say, be true to yourself, find the right path, but I also think there's there's this other discussion of we don't want it to be so crazy and weird that it's chaotic. And I think there is partly a, a need in our industry to standardize a little bit more with some of a more consistent career path model. The the problem that we have of it being the Wild West is that you know one agency versus another agency versus another brand and another brand they all have different paths and different things. Like what, what constitutes a creative director versus an art director versus a designer versus all of those things. And, and I think it's really important for us to at least establish some clear parameters. Like you can jump around all you want, but at least have some paths, right? Some industry paths that we all agree on. I, I'm finding that's a big issue, even internally with our company. It's like, we have an internal like nomenclature of like job codes of what levels and things are. And then we have complete inconsistency where someone who's a creative director at one job code versus a different job code. And, and in our minds, it's like, let's just, let's just line it all up and make sure there's some consistency. So um, what are your thoughts on that? Like, have you seen inconsistencies throughout your career in terms of from one company to another in how they're deeming what one job is? Or it seems pretty consistent as far as like what a creative director does versus an ECD versus an art director and all that. Uh, it seems pretty consistent. Um, I Recently, um, we did kind of a rebrand in some of our titles. And so while previously, you know, I, my role would be more of a creative director. Mm-hmm. Um, my title is um, content director of story. Hmm. So trying to get away from the agency model of saying writers and designers. But so I would be a content director of story. My art counterpart part would be a content director of experience. So how do we get just beyond, you know, the traditional models? So that's great, but it also, how does that translate to other, to other companies or agencies? So um, I think that's where, I think having that standardized nomenclature does help. And, and that's in your building out your um, qualifications for the job or, you know, when you're hiring and what you're looking for and those can come across. But uh, I do agree that like there, there needs to be a, some consistency across the board. Yeah, exactly. All right. So in light of that, certainly right now in the video, hopefully we are, we're going to bring up uh, for the audience, if you're watching this on video, 
at least a, a visual of what the modern career path should look like. Um, I know on, it's a little tricky if you're listening to this on a podcast, but it, it goes through, and you can always go to realcreativeleadership.com and check out um, what we're talking about is in terms of these career paths. But there is, it's nice to know, like there is some consistency of, you got to start somewhere, whether you're a junior a designer, a junior art director, junior production artist, whatever that may be, and move up to kind of a senior role. And then you have a lot of choices at that point. The old model was you just got to go right into management. Like that's the only way to grow your careers. You got to be a, a leader and a manager. But as you found, like there are some fallacies that, you know, some people, A, are either good at one skill and not another, and we're forcing them into other roles, or B, they don't want to be a manager and they just want to, you know, find a more individual path. And if you look at our new career paths, you can see there's totally an, an option for that. You could be an individual and be a senior writer, designer, whatever it may be, director, or you could go independent, like you'd mentioned, and go freelance or do whatever you want of building, building a company. And then there's always still that management path. So with that context, so hopefully people are either seeing or listening to that, um, I want to dig first at the beginning. Like you'll notice that there are separate paths for designers and art directors in production. And let me give you my experience, and I'd love to know what you've thought about this, Joe, which is, you know, there's some people, you know, the old model was you start as a production person, then you move a designer, and then you move to art director, and then creative director. And I have fault with that because there were, there have been so many people on my teams that are either like really, really good at the technical skills, and they're really good at production, or they're really, really good at conceptual skills and more of like art director where they're coming up with TV ideas and broadcast or the, you know, big campaign ideas. Or they're a designer, which in my mind has been traditionally someone who's really, really good at the design craft, but maybe not necessarily awesome at, you know, deep technical stuff or deep conceptual stuff. So to me, like if we're looking at the difference between the designer and an art director, designers are more like the fine artists and, you know, they're great, you know, they love letting and type and all those things and they're bringing it together and it's really like even tactile things that they want to feel and paper samples and stuff. And an art director is more of like high conceptual, big campaign thinker and maybe he's a decent designer, but really more of like that, that conceptual person. At least that's how it was for me in most agencies. How about you? What's the difference for you between those, those different roles? To me, designers are expert in their craft of graphic design, art directors in the ad world, um, are very conceptual people. They went to, maybe they went to a portfolio school and they learned about art direction and they took Photoshop and they took Illustrator. But a lot of that was to comp up an idea of a conceptual idea. They weren't really into the craft. I think as technology has <clears throat> grown and more people have access to it, polishing these ideas has become I think the tools, especially that Adobe offers, um, they're up for everyone. So I feel like a lot of people now are stepping into those roles, but I don't think they've really mastered what the skill set behind it. Learning Photoshop back in the day, you were dodging and burning photos. Um, that's darkroom terminology. Mm. You know, I, I feel like I feel like we've grown up and this new generation is growing up completely digital. They, they might not know how an, a camera works and how the aperture works and they don't know the mechanics behind it. And they have never set type. I'm not saying you need to go back and do all those things, but you should have an understanding of why they were created and, and the outcomes you can get from that. So I, I always tell teams to like, hey, put the computer down, take mm -hmm. out the moleskin, take out the notebook, Let's just comp something up. Let's draw it out. And then if it's a great idea, spend the hours polishing it. But don't spend hours comping up this amazing thing in Photoshop and it just lands like a, you know, mm -hmm. the big thud because the idea isn't there. Yeah, that's fun. You know, that makes me also think just about even the word art director. Like in movies, certainly it makes sense. Like it's 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 creating the the feeling or the the mood board, right, of what the the movie is going to be about. But in marketing advertising, it's really been an interesting, weird word. And I think there's a lot of confusion where people see the word director, and that sounds super official. It sounds like creative director, yeah. and they've been saying, oh, an art director is someone who's going to be on set directing. And and you know, more and more that role has just become the creative director to do all of that, of yeah. like create the set, create the, the, the visual, create the whatever. And so I almost just wonder if there's just like, it's a dated term of art director and we should just merge that in with designer or, you know, have something else that's more of like, cause we were talking about how it's like designer and art director is like more of the craft and, and fine, fine art design versus an art director is more of like the conceptual person in an agency that works. And I'd say in my experience, when I worked in an agency, I needed like 
75% more art directors, tons of them, and very few designers. But then on the brand side, it's like, no, we have a lot of designers and very few art directors because you're not doing tons and tons of campaigns, right? Like you're just, there's just so much more to the list of, of content that you're creating. So I don't know, I, I, I'm a little confused, but I do, I, I wish we could get past that. Like most art directors aren't director level in a brand, no, <laughs> no chance, you know? And it just creates confusion in terms of like, what level are they? So maybe it's just, Maybe in brands, we just avoid art director and it's just, you know, you're a design, designer up to senior designer. And then if you go management, you go creative director, you know, and you're, and you're directing things. I think writer and, des uh, writer and designer are where it's at. I remember I started and I told people, you know, I'm a copywriter and they're like, oh, and then I like come back with something like, so you're a lawyer, like you copyright things like. <laughs> you trademark them? And I was like, no, I write concepts and work in advertising. And then, you know, for an art director, like you're saying, like, what are you really directing? And, and I've always thought like, well, maybe you're, maybe not the art director level, but as an art director, you are directing the photography or the design or the, the elements that are in the comp or in the commercial. You're directing those individual pieces, but you're not a like you said, a director of, of, yeah. a per, of people or a staff or anything. So. Well, let's just see. Like, I would love more comments from everyone else out there. Like, are we, is this just an old vestige of something we need to fix? Should we just make creative directors the directors and, and, and stop it with the art directors and we're all just designers? I don't know. Like, it's just, it's a good comment. It's a good thing that I'd love to hear from all of you out there of what you're thinking. But, you know, it just seems like we just create more and more confusion, especially when titles and someone feels like they need the art director title because it feels fancier than a designer title. Whereas like to me, a senior designer sometimes is, I mean, they may have more seniority, more vision, more whatever than just a, a simple art director. So it just seems counterintuitive to go up to a senior designer and then back down to an art director based on the old model. Well, let's move on to the next one. So the next topic, how, let's talk about if you do choose, again, you don't always have to choose, but if you do choose to go into the management route, you know, is that the choice for everyone? Like, I guess the question is, do, can some people choose a different route? Like in your experience, can you still grow your career without having to become a creative director, without having to become an ACD and just go into like the individual expert path rather than the, the management path? Have you seen that work? So the short answer is no, you can have oh, a great dear. career. Um, whatever, without ever jumping on the management track. If you ask my dad or mom, they would probably say, They'd have a different opinion. I will say this. I do think it's important to at least cross that path of a manager, even if it's at, you know, a, an ACD or a CD level. Cause I think that you, it's not going to, it's not that it's growing your career as much as it's going to help you grow as a person. Mm, that's fair. Managing and mentoring younger creators will help you learn invaluable skills or you'll learn marketing or sales and strategy skills that will be with you for a lifetime and make you a more well-rounded creative. And I know that helped me. Um, that said, when you look at your, the modern career path that you've outlined, there are so many options or paths to progress it forward. And I picture basically this heartbeat that goes up and down and goes as it goes across the path. So maybe you start off as a strategist, then you become a writer and maybe you work up to an ACD and you go to freelance and maybe you buy an old school bus and travel and work across the country and you write a book on being a nomad creative and you give a local TED talk, who knows? Then you can go back and work as a, at a social agency, maybe go in-house and become a CD and then jump back to strategy and on the brand side. I, I think it's, I don't think it's this linear path. And I, and I know that maybe I've jumped around too much between different professions, but I do think that you have you can actually have you know a greater career by having that heartbeat not just a flat lin linear line going across oh that's awesome i love that in fact last year i interviewed a dozen different um you know great leaders from a lot of huge brands from you know disney and google and oracle and apple and pixar and just mapped out all of their career paths. And it was that heartbeat. Like I, I saw people who moved from freelance into agency back into brand and, and, and so forth and at different levels too. It's not like once you hit CD, you're a CD for, you know, golden forever. Like there are people who then move back into a senior role for some project or thing, or, or like you said, take the bus tour around wherever, you know, place that you're interested in. But I love that. I think that's great. I think the, the illustration of the, this image is just that those are just kind of common streets whether you follow that street or not, I think is, is 
up to you, but at least establishing here are some paths. Like you're not going to necessarily jump from ACD to chief creative officer in, you know, in two months. Like there's certainly some steps and some growth in between that you'd need to figure out as you, as you move along. Like you said, there's so many options out there. If you're into management and I think it's good to try it, I learned a lot from it. Yeah. Go, yeah. Up, go for it. Go down the path, you know, give it a go for sure. As you know, creatives in this industry, once you master these hard skills, I, I think there's, there's definitely a role for being an expert mm. and to really focus on that area. If that's what you want to do, if you're not going, if you don't want to manage people and, and take that track, there is tremendous value in having someone that knows uh, their craft really well and that can help and inspire others. Now let's move on to this next question of like, does, has remote work changed everything for creative leadership or is it all still the same and we're just, you know, in a different location? I mean, we've broken down geographies and time zones and proven that we can manage teams, produce work and have virtual shoots. I had one this summer, you know, it was amazing. I think it's, it's going to help those who are maybe in smaller markets be able to have a shot at a larger market, you know, that are outside or an agency or a brand. And I personally can't wait to get back to the office. You know, I hate the commute. You know, <laughs> I think it's like all in, I'm two and a half hours a day, Ugh. you know, but what I do, I, I miss the energy and I miss the in-person collaboration. But uh, I have a lot of friends that right now that, um, you know, unfortunately due to the pandemic, um, you know, lost their jobs and they've, you know, have been diving into freelance and all of a sudden, you know, it's like, I feel like their horizons have opened up. It's mm -hmm. something that they wouldn't, they wouldn't have left an agency job to pursue that. And now they're, they're getting, you know, different experiences. So I, I think that independent bath is more and more people are going to see that as a viable path. Oh, I couldn't agree more because it's, it's, you're, you're right. It really has opened up the opportunities and level the playing field for everyone. So that markets don't matter. I, I know in the past when it was like, Oh, we got to hire someone. It's always just like, who do we have in market? And, Oh, I don't know if we dare go jump to this other market because you know, all the moving costs and all that kind of stuff. And if that's all gone, yeah, what an opportunity for not only like hiring anyone in anywhere. It's, it's like, yeah, you, you could, you could jump to whatever your dream path is, start going for it and don't feel like you're being held back. You know, you don't have to work for that, small manufacturing company in the middle of your state. And that's because that's the only, you know, big employer in your city, you could totally move to anything you wanted. I think that's, that's an amazing opportunity. If you could redo your path, what would you do? Would you change anything? Or do you like where you've gone into all these? Cause I'm sure you've learned a ton of great things from every experience you've had, right? I've met amazing people along the way. And there are a lot of things I wouldn't change, but the one thing I would change I would have taken risks earlier in my career before I got married, before I had kids and a mortgage. Um, so when I first started out, um, I was working at an agency. I was a writer. Uh, I just wasn't being fulfilled with my assignments. So I decided to go back to school at night. Um, I took classes at Ad House in New York City and School of Visual Arts um, just to, for more creative stimulus. And in one of the classes, um, I had a teacher approached me after class and he offered me a job and the pay was a hundred dollars a day. Wow. Um, and that was, you know, more than half of what I was making. And I said to him that I had to think about it. And he just looked at me <laughs> and turned around and walked away. And, you know, I, and it was like, ah, I just felt like, Oh, I, I was so scared that, you know, I was put on the spot, but I wonder where would my career, if I would have said yes, you know, if I would have taken that pay cut, I was single at the time, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't have all, you know, all the responsibility. So I would say, you know, take risks. Another thing, you know, I, I look at my journey and, you know, you know, advice I'd give to, to maybe younger creatives is to, or older creatives, any creative, stay hungry and always look for opportunities to learn more, round out your talents, read books just kind of explore, you know, like if you're in Paris, don't make a, you know, a beeline for the Louvre and to go see the Mona Lisa, go check out the, the obscure museum of taxidermy and hunting. I mean, go find something different, you know, mm. take a different path and just stay curious, work for a small agency, work, maybe work for a big one, but I would take time 
to freelance. I would take time to just try to go out on your own and see what that's like and find the path that really suits you. No, that's fun. I might, I'm probably the opposite. I'd be like, hey, if I were to redo my career, I would have taken more risks later in my, in my career than, than early on. I feel like there's some good formative years and you're right. Like try it all, try small. I tried small agency, big agency, you know, whatever it was, big accounts, small accounts and, and, it, and freelance. It's all good stuff because it teaches you such different skills. What does it take to get promoted the next step? Whether you're a senior, a CD, an ECD, what are the things that people can, can try in terms of, of, of pushing something to move to their next career path? I think you and I also had a discussion earlier about you know, this idea of going beyond the brief and to, um, to always um, to go beyond this, what's just the expected and the deliverable. I know earlier in my career, you know, I had a task of, it was a simple banner ad. Mm -hmm. you know, and my partner came and I went back and we came up with an idea that was, you know, led to a TV spot. So it's, it's just always, it's always pushing for more. And it's, and I would say it's also like getting to understand the business side as well. I think as creatives, we're stuck with, oh, we just need to come up with a cool idea or do a cool spot or a cool print ad or something like that. And we're not realizing you know, the business side of it thing of things or the strategy or the money side, being a creative leader is really, um, is more than just bringing your creativity and your hard skills. It's having that creative vision. Um, and that's, you know, I've always, someone gave me some great advice early on my career and it's, you know, there's the hot shops, um, the real creative shops, but it's not about where you work. It's who you're working for. And I think to me that it's kind of helped in my career of finding those creative leaders that I admire and how they manage and how they stand up for good work and to be almost, you know, as, as my mentor and as my North star of, of where I want to take my career. So it's, it's really putting stock in, in finding people that, that you can um, respect in the industry. I think being kind and being nice can mm -hmm. go a long way in this industry. Um, we don't need any jerks. We don't need any inflated egos. What I loved about going on brand side was I got away from teams competing on every assignment. Mm -hmm. You know, right now, the team I work with now, we, we all work together. We want each other to succeed and we all build on each other. And I, and I feel like in this industry, it can be very cutthroat. And I feel like it's a small industry. Let's be nicer to each other. Let's be kind and let's be better people. I think, you know, the industry and the work will be better for it. So, Wow, those are some wise words. And I love just going back to that topic of beyond the brief. I think that that right there is such a critical bit of information. So anyone who's trying to move up in their career, if you just do what you're supposed to do and do a great job at it, you're not moving up. You're just doing a good job at whatever you are, your current position. And, and management is going to see you as, oh, great, they're doing an awesome job at their current position. So if you want to move up, you've got to go beyond the brief. You have to look for a vision. You have to look for new ideas. You have to look for ways of extending. Like even within brands, it's like, how can we do this storytelling a different way? How can we do this in a different medium? How can we do this in different, you know, with, you know, with different partners or whatever it may be? That is that little, you know, little something that goes off on some, in someone's head and they just start looking for new things and aggressively climbing. Those are the signs to me that they're really trying to grow. That's what I'm going to look for. So go beyond the brief. That is a great place to end on. Make sure you do that and do it in a nice way. <laughs> I love it. And, and, we, and when you're in that briefing session, ask questions, challenge the brief. You don't yeah. have to be a jerk about it, but just ask questions, poke holes. Like that's where the learning and the sparks take place. You know, if you are a creative that just accepts the brief and just goes off in your corner without bringing your own critical thinking, it's, it's not going to go as far as, as it could if you were to just, just dive in and, and really question it and be passionate about it. Oh, that's awesome. Good advice. Well, thank you, Joe. This has been a fantastic discussion. I really appreciate you joining us on, on, uh, on the show. We appreciate it. Now let's just, you know, as we're ending here, if, if uh, anyone has any questions or comments, please join us on 
either a realcreativeleadership.com and make some comments or on YouTube in the, in the chat comments, wherever podcast, wherever you're listening or watching this, we'd appreciate your involvement. We're so grateful for having Joe here today. Um, Joe, how can people get a hold of you just on LinkedIn? Is that the best way to, to stay and follow you? Yeah, just hit me up on LinkedIn. Um, look forward to it. Thanks. Perfect. And as always, you can find us at realcreativeleadership.com. You can find me at adamwmorgan.com. The stokegroup.com is where you can get help from uh, if you need to scale or, or, or get some more creative juices into your, into your flow. Uh, they're an awesome partner in, in making this happen. So all the different ways that you can reach us. And the big ask at the end here is it's just to get involved with us. We would, we would really appreciate it. You know, go out there, like, thumbs up, you know, subscribe to whatever platform you're listening on or watching on. We would appreciate it. So thank you so much for listening. This has been all about career paths and we will see you at the next episode. Thanks for joining. Thanks for listening to Real Creative Leadership. I'm your host, Adam Morgan, and this series was brought to you by The Stoke Group. For the most effective marketing, use both sides of your brain to align your strategy, creative, execution, and analysis. Connect with The Stoke Group for help designing each step of your marketing plan and creating a coherent vision. Visit thestokegroup.com to learn more.